And we have today, Nikki is going to present. Um, Nikki is from Tennessee. And for her day job, she is stage manager for a lot of theatrical productions. She also acts, but she's also a creative and has spent nearly a month here working with PhD student Wei Shi Chen, uh, learning about origami and materials. And we're really looking forward to your presentation tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deidre. Cheers, you guys, to technology and finally getting it up and running. Yeah, me and computers are not best friends, but it's cool. It's cool. So hi, I'm Nikita Staggs. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm going to talk to you a little today about some of the work I've done since I've been here and some of the research I've been doing. So uh, here we go. So I come from this school. Oh, that did not switch. I didn't switch on the thing. <laughs> I know, again, to technology. <laughs> There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I graduated from Tennessee State University. Yay. Go Big Blue. Love my HBCU. If you haven't heard, TSU students probably have the biggest pride in <laughs> all of the nation. But also, TSU is one of the top schools in the nation for its nursing program and for its education program. Neither of which I did because I like theater. So <laughs> I was in the theater program and I graduated with my degree in speech communication with a concentration in theater and a minor in English literature. And then um, I got a career in acting and dancing and stage management and all that fun stuff. And then I also started to work behind the scenes and I would make props and things. I got a really great job working for a company that had a haunted house and my job was to make the props for the haunted house and that's where I first started to learn how to wire and how to work with LED lights and fiber optic lights, a lot of which I try to incorporate into my work. So here's some earlier projects that I made it was a hand that I sculpted out of resin and put the fiber optic lights into. And while working on that, I got to thinking, it's nice. It looks pretty, it functions, but resin, it's a really rigid material. And I thought, what if it could move? Or what if it was made from something a little bit softer? And I thought, what if I could make something that like, could actually function with the human body. And I was like, oh, prosthetics, people already make those. No biggie, I mean, it's cool, you know? And also I didn't know where to start. So I did what I normally do and I drew a picture. And it got me to thinking about the building blocks of life, about DNA being the building block of life. And if you really did, want to start somewhere with like growing cells and engineering cells, it would be a really good idea to start with what I consider to really be nature's scaffolding, which is um, cell walls. And so I started looking into more plant structures and seeing how those could be related into engineering. And I also came across a lot of geometric shapes and geometric shapes have always caught my eye. It's, I think it's something that our eye is drawn to in nature simply because it's symmetrical, it's mathematic, it makes sense. And so I thought, okay, go with the structure that is closely related to what nature already gives us. 
And so I wanted to largely stick with that hexagon structure as well as looking into the compound structure of cellulose and chlorophyll, which also give you that same hexagonal structure or pentagram sometimes depending on how the molecules are connected. But anyways, so trying really hard to stick with that shape, stick with that design and really think about ways that I could try to incorporate biology into engineering. So sticking with that, I went with the hexagonal design and decided it would be a really good idea to do flowers or some sort of plant structure that could come out of that. And I was really inspired by the work of Neri Oxman from MIT when she started doing a lot of research with casein and other biological materials. And she has a really beautiful structure of that's it's like kind of plant-like. It looks very much like a plant, but it's, it's using all natural materials and it's really gorgeous. Love her work. And also my inspiration came from the buildings and the building materials that we already use, which again, are very hard, very rigid. And while they do last a considerable amount out of time, it's kind of feels like we're living on top of nature and not with nature. So I was thinking, what can be designed, what can be engineered so that we can start using the plant life and the more natural materials that we have within our architecture, within our design and within our building. And one of the researchers that's been done is using mycelium, which is a really, really good substance to use for building. You can make it rigid and it's, it becomes like a bioplastic, only completely biodegradable. It grows. So it's something that's in the works. I did try to get some mycelium here, but I couldn't, I couldn't source it doing sourcing materials the way I normally source. But so then I got to meet our wonderful Weishi here, who, as you guys know, does his Kinagami design, which when he first showed it to me on one of our Zoom calls, I was like, oh my God, that's it. That's like, that's the hexagonal structure right there. It has exactly what I was looking for. So where she was very wonderful in helping me come up with a design and a mechanism that we could use to get the flowering design that would open and close. So thank you, Weishi. That was wonderful. And also while I was here, I didn't just do research. I did a lot of research, but I also built this cute little robot who my stepdad affectionately nicknamed Nick 2.0. Um, <laughs> it was definitely, definitely a lot of fun to build him. Um, just a closer look at the wire work that I did, simply because I was really proud of it. And <laughs> my boyfriend congratulated me on how neat it looked, which coming from an electrician is, I guess, a big deal. It made me feel good. So, yeah. And I got to meet some other very cool robots and some other wonderful people who helped show me around. And my research is, it's one of those ongoing things. I've actually been researching plants and bioengineering since, since my early college days, since before I even changed my major to theater because initially, I was a biology major. I was biology pre-med and then um, failed chemistry one good time and decided that that was never gonna happen again. So <laughs> I switched my major and I told myself I was never gonna look back. And then I looked back, <laughs> but it's fine because I really do enjoy 
the work that I do that's on the science end and on the engineering end, as well as the work that I do in the arts and in theater. It's been great to get both of those worlds together and combine them in ways that I don't really see combined a lot. And one of the ways I like to think is, what can we do? What can we engineer that's not for today, tomorrow, or even next week? Like, what can we do that's way beyond, like going far, far into the future? Because I feel like just to, to keep up with all the technology and the research that's already been done, you kind of have to think like way, way far into the future to get to engineer and design something that has actually yet to be designed. Otherwise, a lot of the research that I do is improving on other people's designs, which is, is still good. Again, like with architecture, it's been done the same way for a very, very long time. And I think it's, it's time to slide some new materials in there. I would love to see a future where we are growing buildings and not simply building with brick on brick on brick. But I mean, imagine if you get a hole in your roof and now you don't have to pay $4,000 to get that hole fixed because the hole can regrow and repair itself. So that's a lot of the research that I've been looking into and hoping to really get to continue my research into bioengineering and I, I've been trying not to get my head too deep into the nano world, but it kind of seems like it's impossible to avoid. Uh, <laughs> the more you start talking about like growing cells and, and engineering stuff like that, the more the nano side ends up coming in. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see where that ends up. And since my design was dealing with flowers as well as with Weishi's origami design. I thought it would be a really nice idea to make some origami flowers. So if you see on your table, there should be some paper. Yeah, if you just grab a sheet, I'm gonna grab my sheet here. And if you're on Zoom, you can also do this. All you really need is one square sheet of paper. It's really simple. So I say, I think, now mind you, <laughs> I actually just learned how to make these flowers like three days ago. So let's see if I remember. So first thing you're gonna do is make a triangle. One triangle. Oh yeah, thanks. And you're going to take that triangle and make another triangle. Okay, now I'm going to make sure I don't make a paper crane because that's what I'm usually so used to folding. And I see this shape right here and automatically my fingers just want to do the crane, but we're not going to do that. So take your triangles and you're going to open them back up. I'm going to come out here and use my cradle. Then all you do is you take one corner, fold it into the center. So it could look like that. No, because we're going to do all the sides. All right, so once you put all your corners down, you should have a square that's like that. Yep. Yeah. Got your square. And now I need to do what I love about origami, other than it being like perfect geometry, which for some reason just gets you going. But <laughs> you're going to repeat and just 
Again, pull the corner right down to the middle. So in the end, you should have something that looks like that. A square. Now let me see if I can remember what the next part was. So you gotta turn it over to the back. Yeah. And we gotta do my favorite thing in life, just to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> Pull those corners down to the center again. All right, so now you should have yet another square. Can you guys tell I like squares? And now, you're supposed to go same flat and just sit down and open the right back up. Yeah. And you're going to flip it to this side that actually has the flat that opens the closure. Yep. And you're going to take one of those flats and you're going to fold it up, leaving just a little bit so it's going to look like that. And it should come up just just like that to be I don't know. I I I I I I I Our next part, let's see if I can remember this one. Yeah. So you're going to turn over to the back. Just have your flat right here. Okay. And you're going to take your folded corner here, not your corner that's coming up, but the one that's further down here. And you're going to fold that down into the center. And if you can, at the same time, fold the other one down. Thank you. 
all of your four corners up like that. y'all yeah and i <laughs> didn't think to ask if anyone had any questions <laughs> if you're joining me on zoom thank you so much for being here cheers to y'all ma larry can i see y'all <laughs> yay <laughs> do you guys have does anyone on Zoom have any questions while they're they're folding theirs? Do you guys have any questions? Hey. Oh, there's. All right, anyone out there, if you have not yet taken a look at my little table back here that I have set up, I have um, some of my drawings, some of my designs 
some of them we, okay <laughs> Okay, <laughs> yeah, some of them relate directly to the work I did here. Um, actually, they all relate directly to the work I did here. Um, some of them are drawings that I was inspired to do while thinking about organic structures and about bioengineering and different ways that that could help us in the future. I finished really early, you guys. I feel like I didn't say, <laughs> maybe I just spoke really fast, like I tend to do. I think it's hard math, but I think it's hard math. Oh, yes, yes. So for my art design, my robotic art design, I have designed a flower. Let's see, there's a picture of it and what it is oh, can I go back and get my pictures no okay yeah but I have a flower that's the idea is for it to be a nice clear structure with fiber optic lights inside and that's going to be made the base of it will be made from plastic but for the petals I have medical grade silicone, which I sourced because right now it's one of the most common materials that can be used in place of like more natural structures. Uh, it's already used in medicines because it pairs really well with the body and everything. So that's what the petals will be made out of. The petals will also have that nice geometric structure that I love so much. Uh, yeah, and hopefully we will get it to look like nice, beautiful, clear leaves with fiber optic lights running through them to mimic the veins of the plant and the geometric pattern to mimic the structure of the cell wall. So yes, that is, that's my presentation on what I've been doing since I've been here for the month. Thank you guys so much for joining.